Hello and welcome to this new learning video. This video is only one part of a collection of several videos that will cover all white water settings. Before I start, please take notice about that Blender 2.83 has been released and in this video I will use it. Ok, let's begin with foam. I have prepared a scene with basic things we need for simulation. A domain box, a fluid object and a moving obstacle that will generate waves and foam for our scene. To enable white water simulations in general, open the white water panel and enable the checkbox for enable white water simulation. Foam, bubbles and spray will be enabled by default, but at this video will be about foam only, bubbles and spray will be disabled as well as dust. I would say let's run a simulation with the basic settings for white water to see how it works. For the fluid simulation let's choose a resolution of 150 and for flip fluid surface you can increase the subdivisions to 1. And then let's bake. Great, to increase the playback performance I recommend to switch to preview mode. This will only show the preview mesh for our fluid surface, but also not all white water particles. But we can increase the number of visible particles while being in the preview mode. To do this, just click in the outliner on the foam object. Then you will find all available settings for it and can increase the preview display settings to 100%. One hand here. This will take effect on all white water particles like bubble spray and dust for example, if there were some. But you can limit this by switching to foam, bubble spray, dust. When doing this, the text below changes to foam in place of white water, what tells you that only foam will take effect of the value you type in here. Now you have a much better viewport performance with all foam particles visible. Okay. When watching this, you will find out that many foam particles are not really on top of the fluid surface. Some are underwater and others are flying in the air. One reason for this is that our add-on generates white water from the final simulation grid. There's no preview cache for white water particles. And that means when switching back to final for the display settings, this looks way better. But also here. When making the fluid surface invisible, you can clearly see that there are some foam particles underwater. When rendering the surface with a transparent material, you will see all the foam that will look realistic in my opinion. The setting that is required to make the foam be on top is called advection and will be explained later in this video. However, there is a way to move the foam after baking. We can use the delta transform to move all the particles along the z-axis. Find it here in the object properties panel. Open the delta transform panel and then move all particles using the z field for location. But take care when using this trick as this can end up in an unrealistic rendering. Okay. Let me drive deeper into the different white water settings. Select the domain and take a look. In general, the maximum amount of white water particles will be limited to the value you type into the max particles field. No matter what we are going to do now, the max value will not be exceeded. We will keep it at the default of 12, what means 12 million particles. And when talking about white water particles, please do not misunderstand them as fluid particles. To be not confused, here's a quick graphic. This is the fluid. The fluid itself will be simulated as particles, that are the blue dots you can see. And later on they will be meshed by our add-on. The result is called fluid surface in the outliner. These fluid particles are in motion depending on what happens in your scene. And depending on settings we will take a look soon, they will generate emitters. Like with every particle system, white water particles need emitters to be emitted. 
The emitter generation depends on settings we will talk about and placed also depending on the settings randomly inside the mass of fluid particles. Whoa, okay, while water particles in example foam will not be meshed and will be visible as little spheres or any other object when you choose to do so. Actually, our white water simulator uses three kinds of emitters, wave crest emitters, turbulence emitters and dust emitters. Wave crest and turbulence emitters will generate foam, bubbles and spray, while dust emitters are for dust particles only. Bubbles and foam perform special tasks in our simulator. Bubble becomes foam when coming up to the water surface, and the same happens with spray when falling down. This is why simulating bubbles is helpful when a lot of foam is required. More about bubble spray and dust in another part of the series. The following settings will have a strong effect on how many particles will be emitted and under what conditions they will be emitted. We differentiate between wavecraft and turbulences for the emission. In this example, you can see the difference of both. On the left side, I have increased the wavecraft emission to 500 and leave the turbulence value at 175. And on the right side, the other way around, wavecraft 175 and turbulence 500. The reason why you can only see some little changes here is because turbulence mainly is used to generate bubbles. And bubbles will become foam when coming to the top of water. To make this visible, I have enabled bubbles for the simulator and also decreased the minimum turbulence value from 100 down to 10. This is required as there is not many fluid motion in the beginning of the animation. Later in this video, I will explain that using a graphic. The next example shows the effect of energy speed. On the left side, I have changed the minimum energy speed from order 2 to 0 0.01. The maximum speed keeps being 3. On the right side, I kept minimum at 0 0.01 and set maximum to 10. And on the bottom, minimum 0 0.01 and maximum 0 0.1. We can now click the advanced button to drive even deeper into the emission settings. The highlight checkbox helps us to find advanced settings easier. As you can see, under the min and max energy fields are new fields. They work the same way but will not look for the speed of the fluid but for wave crest and turbulence speed. And to make all these things together easier to understand, here is a graphic. This curve explains the way particle speeds and motion plays together. The moving vertical line represents the speed of the fluid particles. How fast they are depends on your scene. Inflows and moving obstacles will accelerate fluid particles a lot and will help to generate white water particles. Here's the curve animation overlaid to one of the previous examples. We have used the minimum of order 2 and maximum of 3. The curve shows where the fluid particles had the fastest motion and where white water particles were emitted. And this curve will be very interesting for you. It shows that using a maximum of 10 will scale the curve and decrease the way the area size where white water particles can be emitted. That explains why there is much less foam. And here the curve with a max speed of 0.1. It explains as long as your fluid particle speed are over the maximum value, white water particles will be generated. So here is a lot of foam. It's very important to understand that fluid particle speeds are also depending on the domain size, word size, viscosity or many other options. Here are some more comparisons to explain this. On the left, the original animation with its curve. And on the right is an animation where I set the word size to 0.35. You can clearly see how much less white water particles are generated. 
This is because a smaller word side means to have less distance per blender unit and that means less speed for fluid particles. That would mean a bigger word size will generate more white water as the distance per blender unit is higher and fluid particles become faster. Exact this shows this example. Alright, last thing is to take notice about the appeared emitter generation rate field when enabling the advanced mode. As the name says it, controls how many emitters will be generated overall. I hope this was helpful to understand in what way our simulator generates white water particles. The next step is to understand how particles behave using different settings. Let's start with attraction strength. This is default set to 1. In this comparison you can see the difference to an attraction strength of 0. This makes clear that vection defines how intense white water particles are pushed by fluid particles. As we have enabled the advanced settings, we can change some settings here. Like told earlier in this video, here is a setting to move the foam on the top of the fluid surface. It's the offset value. Zero means to be in the middle, by half under one and by the other half on top. This is how it would look like when using an offset of 1. Yes, all foam particles are on top now, but as the foam has a thickness too, this looks a bit strange. So the next step would be to decrease the thickness, called death in the panel. Let's try 0.2 in place of 0.8 and this is the result. Two things more to show you. The first thing is, there's a way to control how long white water particles will live. And the second thing is that you can choose how white water will behave when touching the domain boundary. For the lifetime, take a look to this field. Here's lifespan and here's lifespan modifiers. You can choose what is the minimum and maximum lifetime in seconds of white water particles and give these settings some variance. While the lifespan settings are global for all white water particles, you can use the lifespan modifiers to tell the simulator how to take effect for each type of white water particles. Of course, here's an example for you. On the left, all settings set to their defaults. And on the right, I've increased the minimum lifetime to 2 seconds and the maximum to 12. The variance has not been changed. In all of these examples, the white water particles were set up to collide with the domain boundary. But we could also choose to kill white water particles or to have a ballistic behavior. So here are three examples, collide, ballistic and kill. Finally, here are tips for your renderings. As some people asked why white water particles sometimes are looking very unnatural, like styrofoam or plastic balls for example, please remember that this depends on your scene setup. The default settings from our add-on might not be perfect for all situations. So the most important setting here is the particle scale. In my intro animation, I set the particle scale to O. 002. And here's a rendered still using a scale of 0.02. This setting can be found when selecting one of the white water objects in the outliner or while the domain is selected under the flip fluid display settings panel. But not only the particle size but also the used shader setup can help to improve your rendering. My example was rendered with a transparent shader for the foam particles using a transmission value of 0.5 and an IOR of 1.2. Okay, that's all we can tell you about foam. The next video will be about bubble spray and dust. And after that, we are ready for another white water video where we will talk about how to use these settings for specific scenes. 
So thank you for watching and goodbye.